Here, William, hold this. Why? I'm gonna leave you holding the bag. Well, we are not gonna leave you holding the bag. We have a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are at Washington Park in the Rose Garden, and later in the show, Rachel's going to show you how you can propagate your own roses. And also, coming up in the show, we'll be taking you to an old rose garden with a new face. But coming up first, some tips for wise watering. Well, it's summertime, and you know, we don't want to waste water. We want to put it where we need it. So I'm with Kevin today from the Regional Water Providers Consortium. And so Kevin, what do we do so that we are in the summertime and we're watering when we should and it's vacation time, so what should we be doing? Well, it, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, you shouldn't be doing anything different than you did when you started these up in the springtime. But there's a few tips that we can have, especially if we're going away, we need to be reasonably assured that everything <laughs> is working the way it should. So that one of the first things that you want to do is just turn them on and take a look and, and see what the coverage looks like. Is it going where it's supposed to go? So in this it case, <laughs> it's not. And so you would want to just come down. These are fairly easy to adjust. And just reach down and turn that nozzle. That's pretty easy. To go where you want it to go. Definitely. And then also, I see that we have a blowout. So sometimes well, that happens, doesn't it? It does, and sometimes it happens when we're gone. Ah. So it's a really good idea to let one of your neighbors know just that you're gonna take off and <laughs> that the sprinkler's coming on. So if they see a geyser, and in the process, you should also show them how to turn that system on. Right, it's nice to have a buddy on your block. Right. Definitely. And it's, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, let them know who you call. If you have a, a professional that you use, say, well, shoot, if I've got a, a problem here, call this guy. Right, right. Well, we have another location down the block, and we're going to talk about some other tips when we're away on vacation. So let's go over there. Great. All right. So, Kevin, these are some other ideas that we can do if we're on vacation or if it's very hot. And so containers would be something that we really need to know about. Well, the, the, the containers catch it from all sides. That's the bad <laughs> side. A plant that's in the ground, we're going to have, you know, mostly the, the solar radiation is going to come from the top in a container all the way around the right. roots. So not only are we fighting the evaporation and the transpiration, we're also fighting the heat. One of a, a really good tip to do if you're going on vacation is to actually set your pots in water. Um, you can see here we've got some pepper plants that are set down and even though that looks like a lot of water and you think you might gonna drown it, you gotta remember this is gonna evaporate over the course of the days and, and the plant is gonna use it. So something like this, putting it in a more shady spot is a good idea. The other thing that you can do is, is if, you, if you wanted to, to, to do something like this would be to set up a system to where you can put everything together and, and set up sort of a timer situation oh, or perfect. something like sure. that. That is nice. And b group everything together, and especially if you have friends coming to water, they're not all over the yard. Absolutely. And everything's together. But a couple important things. Um, one is, is that if you have a system of water and you want to give that plant what it needs. So if you're having a neighbor do it, I think it's a really good idea to tell them, look, you know, when you turn this on, only turn it on for 30 minutes right. because that's how much it needs. And please don't forget it and go away. Right. The other thing is, is, is trying to set your times up at such a time where perhaps it's not as early as you would normally do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe your neighbors are up and around and walking and, and they go, there's a geyser coming up here, <laughs> right. he's got a problem. And showing them how to turn it off right. is another important part. And then real quick, what about if we have a drip system or just our hoses and check those two? Always. Um, hoses, the, the big thing is, is, there's two big things that we find. One is a drip. And if you make sure that your connections are tight and the gaskets are tight before you go away, there's a good thing. The other thing that we find is people forget and they turn them on and oh, forget to I turn them on. Um, the consortium and some of the other water providers often offer these free little timers that will turn it on for 30 minutes and turn it off. So that's a good idea to have. The other thing is, is irrigation is all about managing holes in pipe. 
And the holes that we know about, that's the ones we want to manage. It's the ones that we don't know about, that's what causes us problems. So taking a walk around, um, turning on your drip system, checking the connections, seeing that the emitters are actually putting out water, really good idea before you take off. Uh, there are so many good tips that we've just talked about, but so much more on their website, conserveh2o.org. So go to Garden Time, we'll click you over to there, and you can be prepared for this hot, the heat in the summer or when you're going on vacation. Kevin, thanks so much. Thank you. Is your garden getting tired? Don't let your garden fizzle out because of the summer heat. Stop by Wavra Farms for a refresher in summer color. We carry a great selection of plants that love the summer. Give your garden the splash of color that it deserves. Your outdoor entertaining will be more enjoyable when you are surrounded by beautiful plants, wonderful flowers, and great fragrance. Let us show you what a summer garden should be. Wavra Farms, just east of Salem, off Highway 22 at the Joseph Street exit. Two stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 26th annual Oregon Jamboree presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Brent Eldridge, Brantley Gilbert, Marin Morris, Low Cash, Jared Neiman, and Diamond Rio. The Oregon Jamboree happening August 3rd through the 5th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. So on this beautiful day, I am standing here with Rachel in the International Rose Test Garden, and we are going to be talking about something that I've never talked to anyone here before myself about, but it's the propagation of roses, and you're going to give us some tips on wh why you can do it, why you should do it if you want to, mm -hmm. and how to do it mostly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a really easy way to do it. I mean, certainly, um, probably very homeowner friendly. Um, anyone can do this. Um, I know sometimes when you move away, you want to take that special rose with you, with you. But you know, digging up that whole plant is tough. So right. why not take a cutting? This is perfect for science experiments, um, for for kids and that type of thing. So if you want, I can give you a little demo. If I, you'd I, like. I would love a primer on this. Yes. Um, so we're actually going to take um, we're going to take vegetative cuttings, which means the actual leaves. And one thing I want to also point out is these are actually going to be on their own roots meaning they're not budded to a root stock. So most roses are budded, but budded to a root stock that is not the rose, that's usually Dr. Huey. So it's a different rose than what you see. Right, right. On and for my own clarification, let me make sure I'm, if you're saying budded, you mean, is that what I used to call grafted? Yes, gra yes okay. that's exactly So right. the root yep. stock is not this rose. Exactly, and so the benefit of that is it just creates a more vigorous um, plant. Okay. Um, but if you if you have like a climate that's really harsh winters, you know, I'm from back east in Philadelphia, and oh man, we just had a bad winter last year. Yeah. So a lot of times it dies back and you're getting Dr. Huey, one of the root stocks. You won't get that rose, if, okay. Yeah, but absolutely. if it's on its own roots, no matter what happens, if it comes back, it'll come back it'll to It'll come back okay. as that, absolutely. That so just want to clarify that, so this is just a really easy way. All you really need is you need a plastic bag, a Ziploc bag, and just fill it up with the soil, anything you need, any no normal, specific, just nothing potting specific, soil. just specific, okay. nothing specific. And so I'm going to ask your help I here. I will. I okay. will be the helper. All right. So I have some water and the most important thing is to keep it moist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some water in there and then I'm going to actually shake it up a little bit. Oh, okay. So now, I a little shake I'm, I'm assuming that you're not, you don't want it floating in water. You're just no, moistening just the soil. just moistening okay. it up. Yeah, so you see how it's fogging up right, right. here? It's kind of humid, humid. So yeah. it's creating kind of like a greenhouse effect. Right. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our cutting. I'm going to see, is that moist enough? Yeah, that's just fine. And I'm going to take, oh, uh, I'm actually going to pick it at a, at a cutting that has just bloomed, kind of like you would deadhead it. And so let's see, let's find a good one right here. So this one, it's the end of its um, bloom period. And basically it's producing a chemical 
um, for, bloom, for bloom production that we actually want to pull from up here and pull it down here to create root so development. The, you're telling me the rose knows that it's going to make this chemical in itself now because these are starting to die off and you want that exactly. to still, okay. You want to bring it down too. that way and so that brings us to our rooting hormone okay. which helps produce that. And so actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut off, cut off, cut off the bottom leaves and I always, always cut off the bloom because, you know, it, otherwise it's going to put its energy into, into the bloom the, making development. Making seeds and stuff. Or bud. Ex yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to... And I always find it works best if you just leave a little bit of um, the, uh, foliage at the top. Okay. And the most important thing is to know that you want to have at least one or two nodes into the soil. And, then, and the node is basically where the foliage is grown off of. Right. So right okay. there. All right, and we're going to start with the two, two nodes, and I'm just going to take my rooting hormone to kind of um, get it? Yeah. aid it in its production. This is actually a little gel that comes in all sorts of different forms, and you can just get it at your local garden center. So you you're just put tapping it at the, the, the part yeah. of you, you Actually, more is, uh, less is more. Okay. So you kind of don't want too much, so you kind of want to put off the excess. You might have noticed that there, there are powders out there, so right. that's probably typically what you see. And what you're going to do is then just take the cutting and you're just going to push it down and like I said make sure those nodes are in the soil. So at least one or two of those are deep enough. So you have Excellent. to get a good seven, seven, eight inches maybe. Yes the exactly. Stem. All right. So you got to have a lot of soil and then actually I'm going to take my glove off for this. You're actually going to seal it up and actually probably one of the zipper ones would work better but this is what I had in my drawers. I'll help you too there. Well, thank we you. got it from both sides. All right <laughs> and so what's one thing I want to stress is don't open the bag. It's actually creating this moist, you can kind of see it fogging up, greenhouse right. effect. And if you open it, you're actually going to allow disease to come in. So then, and, and all the, the moisture will get out at the same it, time. Okay. Exactly. Just leave and, it shut for how long? Um, for about a month. Wow, and wow. what you'll do is you'll actually, just to be safe. Yeah. And what you'll see is you'll actually see the, the roots growing in the soil because it's a clear plastic bag. And that's, that's the thing that I often fail on, is I can't see what's happening. I'm going to assume this, this is great because you'll go, oh, there's the roots. It's yeah, time to do something. It, it's really great. And usually you'll know pretty quickly, maybe within the, the first week or the second week. And if it dies, then you know your cutting didn't take. Yeah. But basically, if it's two weeks and it's still green, the, the, the um, foliage is still green, more than likely it's going to take. And then you'll just start seeing that root. So then, Rachel... <laughs> This might seem like a silly question, but where do the roots come from? The bottom? Is that they're, they're actually going to come from the nodes. Where the leaves grow from. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. Just why you have to be in the soil. And roots. then once that root starts, you just open it up and plant it into like a pot or mm -hmm. something to yep. help it grow on. That's easy. Yep, right? Wow. Really it, easy to do. It is very easy. So there, you know, I, I can't believe how easy this was. When they <laughs> said we're going to propagate roses, I thought, oh, are we going to be in a, a structure somewhere? No, this was simple. It's something mm -hmm. we can all do. You can do it with your kids and you can teach them even about the beauty of science in roses. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure being here with you. Thank Absolutely. you, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save $5 on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Standard TV and Appliance asks, what do you want in new appliances? Do you want GE's gas, electric, convection, induction, stainless steel, slate, French door, Energy Star, top load, front load, high efficiency, or huge capacity? I want it all. Yeah, I want everything. Refresh and save with GE Cafe. Upgrade your kitchen and save up to $1,500 when you buy four GE Cafe appliances. Standard TV and Appliance. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in Historic Silverton. 400 year old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden, the Oregon Garden has something for everyone. You can ensure the garden remains a jewel in the mid Willamette Valley through your support 
as an individual, family, or corporate member. Support the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. I am at Willamette View, which is a senior living community, and I am in their new rose garden, which just went in this spring. And Meredith, that is just incredible that it went in so early. We agree. We uh, were kind of down to the line at some point. <laughs> we weren't sure if we were going to get them in the ground early enough to get the blooms. But as you can see behind us, we got the timing just right, and we've got quite a lovely display behind us. <laughs> and you're the facilities manager here and so really was that a big project to move this and get this all going? It was, it was. We were able to actually salvage quite a few of the original plants. Um, I'm not sure how many but Phil can probably uh, give you the exact numbers on that. But yeah some of the roses were original to the property from 1955. That's when our, we were established so we were able to move some and get them in the ground and get some new ones and there we are. <laughs> and it sounded like a really group project because some of the people here that live here really were kind of sad the Rose Garden was going away. It's true, it's true. And Jim was very instrumental in, in getting that moved and, and identifying the roses that we could save and helping residents select the new ones and getting them all on the ground. That is cool. Yeah. Well, now we have to talk to this troublemaker here, Jim. Uh, <laughs> and we say that with love because you're a rose guy. That's right. And so really you saw the old rose garden going away and you said, well, we have to have roses. Well, uh, yes, and we were having a rebe rebellion from those that uh, <laughs> had the old ro rose garden. So I uh, said, you know, what's going to happen? We want a rose garden. So uh, management uh, uh, here uh, said, yes, let's do it. And this is what uh, how it evolved. And that's why we got what we've got right now. That is so cool. So you did move some roses over. How many were those? We did, about 35. Wow. From the, we had over 400 over in the other wow. uh, rose garden, and uh, we're a little over 300 here now. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And so you're not the only person that helps out. There's a little kind of a group that comes oh, out. Oh, yes. Uh, the ERS, we have a garden committee, and uh, I have been, I'm on the garden committee and was given the uh, job of uh, taking care of the rose gardens. Ah, oh, that is cool. And so people come out and help in Deadhead. That's right. Well, there the plots are all assigned to various uh, residents, and we've got uh, 21 different residents that have plots, and with roses from six to 24. Wow. So they had a choice of you know how many do you want to uh, take care of, and uh, so some said six, and others said you know we want as many as we had before. Wow. So. Uh, that has happened. So Jim, is this the only rose garden here? No, we have two others uh, that are down by the uh, two other buildings that we have. And uh, yeah, those are taken care of by the uh, garden committee as well. And so what does it mean living here and having roses to take care of? Oh, it's great. Yeah. We, uh, we uh, you know, it's uh, peaceful. We have benches that we can come out here. We have a fellow uh, that uh, it works for Habitat for Humanity. We had some old benches and he completely redid them. Oh, and, that was great. And so that's, uh, people come out and sit and and uh, watch the roses and oh, beautiful. hand pick. Oh, that is nice. They can hand pick their own uh, three roses from the two U-cut plots that we have and uh, they can take it back to their apartment even though they don't have a garden of their own. That is so nice. Well, you know, I have to talk to Phil Edmonds now, who is really the consultant here on this Rose Garden. So we're going to get some tips for us homeowners. And now we are joined by our old friend, Phil Edmonds from Garden Rose Consulting. And so Phil, is this a new project for you or you know these people here? Well, I've been taking care of their other Rose Garden where that construction <laughs> is behind us um, for about four, three, four years now. And, um, and uh, when they found out that they were going to add a new building here, they needed to move it. So they asked me to help. Uh, so, and so how did that all go? Did you say, oh, we're just going to put new roses in and nobody had any input? Or how did that all go? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, uh, the, the, the residents here really love their roses. And they tended most of their roses, except for this 
section of open cut roses where they're allowed to come, anybody in that lives here is allowed to come out and cut That's roses sweet. when they're blooming. And so I took care of those and then I sprayed and fertilized the rest of them. And, and uh, so when that project started, they looked around for different sites. And this site here was a, just a big, huge lawn. And it has these views Beautiful. of up and down the river. So they decided, and of course they've got an architect in here who's really good at seeing the vision of that and designed this garden. That yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. And I would think it would be great working with an architect because you have so many people here with different kind of levels of skill and walking and you had to take that all into, into consideration. He, it, was, it was Craig Keast of Huntington and Keast and he has, uh, you know, he has the ability to, you know, take into consideration the, the um, you know, the handicapped and people need wheelchairs mm -hmm. and the elderly that want to be in the garden and see all of this. So, yeah, all the roses need to be accessible accessible for them and so that they can they can actually get by and smell them and this sort of thing so the whole design was based on you know their abilities to get around the garden and this sort of thing and then you know a pleasing view out in the sun from sure. this building next to us oh that so, is true yeah, yeah and then i would be remiss if i didn't ask some tips we're going into summer now for us mm -hmm. homeowners that have roses so what can we do to keep them so healthy and beautiful during this warm summertime well, uh, this time of year, it's getting hot, and you know it's going to be in the 90s, I think, this week. So water, that's important. You know, if you can't water, you know, just on the ground, you know, use your irrigation system and just step it up a little bit more than you normally would. Um, try to keep, uh, you know, can spray down the foliage a little bit that disrupts the spider mite populations, which is always good, uh, because they're going to start to develop as it stays hot and dry. Um, Spray, protect them from black spot and rust if they're susceptible, and, um, and give them a shot of fertilizer about this time of year. It's a good time. Right when they're finishing their first bloom is a good time to fertilize again. Yeah. And enjoy. And enjoy, yeah. Cut right. the flowers. There yeah, you go. Exactly. Well, as you can see, gardening and roses are so important to people of all ages. We want to thank all the people up at Willamette View, and thanks to Phil. It's a great project. Everybody is going to be enjoying this garden for a very long time. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Enjoy food, wine, music, and craft vendors at our Wine and Cheese in the Garden event. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Right now we have fresh picked or pick your own berries ready in our fields. Here's what we have to offer this week. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. So I am here at Down to Earth and I am with Brady from Grady Barrels and we've talked to you before about rain barrels. You, you guys have a great product here. So today we're going to talk to you about if you, if you buy one, 
and you want to do some installation yourself, you, although they come completely ready, you're going to show us how to install it because it's really an easy process, isn't it? Absolutely. It's super easy. If you want to make the barrel yourself, you can buy this kit uh, down to earth, bring recycling to several locations around town. And it's simple, that it comes with the instructions, and these are the tools that you'll need is a drill, a 1 and 9 16 inch hole saw bit, and a 5 in 1 tool. And we'll be making the barrel for you today to and, show you how easy it is. And just to show us, you're actually going to do that now, so let's get started. Absolutely. Open up the bag, and this has a grommet in it to seal it off once you're done, and you'll connect this in after you've drilled the hole. So you'll set that aside. You'll open up your instructions. And it tells you everything that comes with the kit and everything that you'll need, which is not included is the drill and the five in one tool, which you need to do it yourself. All right, so most barrels come with a small little grip on the bottom and on the other side, it doesn't have one. That's to distinguish the coarse cap from a fine cap. The fine cap is where you screw the inflow in. So you sit down on it and straddle it and there's a cross beam right here of plastic. You want to center that off with the drill and push down firmly. Set that aside. I usually hang it on the other barrel because I'll be making more. So you want to go at a 45 degree angle and this is helping the grommet have a good seat to where it doesn't leak. Just make it the best you can to where there's no rough edges, any of this left behind. Put the grommet in. WD-40. Spin, and that's a complete Grady rain barrel. And then if people are, this is what we're gonna do. They're committed to it, they're gonna follow through with it, and they have questions, they can still contact you at your website for questions. Absolutely, that's at gradybarrels.com. Uh, it has photos, it has tank sizes, it has everything you need to know on how to make a rain barrel, uh, where to purchase a rain barrel, and ultimately contact us to have us come out and do a consultation to see what, you, uh, what the potential is for you. Well, there you have it. You know, we have talked for a long time about even in the Northwest, we need to be aware of water and use it wisely. This is a great way to collect water from your own property. So for more information, as always, we will invite you to go to Gardentime.tv. We're going to click you over to their website. Thank you, my friend, really. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching today, and you have to make it up to the garden, Rose Garden, up here at Washington Park. It is just beautiful right now. It's not just pretty at the Rose Festival time, it's beautiful until the end of the summer. And if you would like some more information on today's show, or if you just simply want to re-watch the whole show, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Judy, oh, what? what are you doing? William, I'm trying to find gardening events in my area. And you're having a hard time doing I that? I am having a hard time. You know, all you have to do is go to Gardentime.tv and look at the events page. Ah, that is great news. So if you're looking for gardening events in your area, just go to Gardentime.tv. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.